What's going on guys? So today on this Shoki review, we're going to be taking a look at something... Well, I wasn't quite sure where to put this, because it is technically a plastic model kit, as set up here in the, you know, Pliobot area. But it's also kind of a figure uh, that you're assembling yourself. So, yeah. <laughs> and it is, of course, the Sentinel Pliobot, or that's plastic model kit, plus Rayobot. If it's Ryobot, Ryobot, I don't care. And it is the Gurren Lagan. And we did the unboxing for this a little while ago. Uh, a week ago? I don't know. All these days really do run together. I do, you know, say so myself. And, of course, you do have a nice image here on this front, front of the box. And this actually is representative of the actual kit once it's completed. And I picked it up at Space Cadets in the Woodlands for $49.99. They do have a handy-dandy new website, which actually allows you to buy stuff and pick it up in store, or they will ship out, which is pretty cool. I'm glad they were able to adjust to some stuff. It does have Gurren Log on here. You do have some nice particle effects. Although this is red, uh, that should be green. I don't know why they were thinking that red stuff around Gurren Log on made sense. It needs to be green. All right, so because this isn't a normal thing in any way, shape, or form, we're just going to go around to all the sides. Um, so let's go over here. So we got a plastic model kit right there. It's in a nice new position. You even get to see a big old drill there. I do like it. Uh, I need to actually get this logo. Remind myself, me, to get that logo. Let's see here. I'm coming around to this side, and you get it in all kinds of different poses. Looks pretty cool. Then you even get it with the flight pack, which is cool. So it's shown to different weapons, new positions, all these things, and all that that I can't possibly read. And then... Got this side, even more stuff that I can't read. Another really cool shot there. Does look nice. And we come around to here, and you've got all of the uh, credits and such. Uh, I'm guessing that's a thing. Whoa, look, Flame Toys is involved at some point. So T-Rex, I believe, is a designer. Interesting to see the Flame Toys is involved somewhere along the lines. I know that D4 Toys will also do Sentinel, 1000 Toys, stuff like that. And this is somewhere kind of in that range of things, except you build it yourself. Uh, all this stuff here, plastic plus Rayobot equals, or yeah, just this plastic equals Playobot. So that's cool. Uh, Bluefin distribution logo is there. Little guy with toilet made in China. I'm assuming this is ages 15 plus. I could be wrong, but hey, you know, it is what it is. Ah. Yeah, you didn't think we are going to get away without the most awesome side of this box. Look at that freaking artwork. This alone, totally worth the point of entry. Look at this, look at that. That's sexy. Whether or not I keep this box, I will go ahead and cut this side off. And maybe frame it, because it looks awesome. Illustrated by this person. So, this is fantastic artwork. I love it. It captures... That Studio Gynax feel to a T, but it's more or less of the kit. So I do dig it. So now the box is out of the way, and this is a very awkward box. Not to mention it's like a shoebox lid, which is really weird. Let's go ahead and get him out here. And look, we're back on the black background, which is going to make it interesting. But you know what? I got tired of the white background. Let's go. Okay, so here we have the Gurren Lagan kit, figure, however you want to put it. And as we saw in the unboxing, many bits do come pre-painted, including the head, the entire chest uh, center section, and things like that. However, with everything else, you have to use the stickers or do as I did and paint it. And so you can see here on the side skirts, the forearm gauntlets, the shoulder armor, all these things I have painted. Now, oh, and by the way, here in the uh, little drill holes, as they were, some nice paint there. This is also really hard to film because being black, shiny, and on a black background is a little more difficult. And just proof that I really didn't use any of the stickers. So you've got whatever this color technically is, this kind of gold. you got all your little silver spots there for the drill holes. These are the things for the shoulders, your little sunglasses, stuff like that. And I was this close, this close to using the stickers. But one thing I did is I looked at images of, or from the anime, and looked at images of the Riobot version and decided how I was going to do it. And that's why 
when it comes to like the side skirts and the uh, gauntlets here, I covered it completely instead of leaving the ridges blank. Now, before we get too far, because there's going to be questions. Shoki, what did you paint it with? What colors are those? Oh my God, please tell us. Oh my God, I'm going to tell you. Shut up. All right, so the uh, gold gold is this Gundam Marker Red Gold. And I use my Gundam Marker airbrush set and every last ounce of paint that was left in this marker. And I barely got it done. But I think that this was actually a fairly close approximation to that gold up there. It was about as close as I could get it. And then the offset gold there, I used Tamiya Champagne Gold. Should I say that again? Tamiya, or Tamiya, for those in other parts of the world, Champagne Gold. There you go. And then as for the silver stuff here, and on the accessories, that is all uh, silver leaf. Tamiya silver leaf. You can use chrome if you want, whatever. And then here, this is just Tamiya uh, primer with Tamiya gloss coat over it because I don't have any actual white paint. But one thing you'll notice is I've got a little bit more gold coming up behind the flame head there. The rest of it normally stops down here behind it. Uh, that I actually just copied from the actual images of the robot itself. And so you even got back here on these little bitty things those guys should have some in there i don't think it comes with stickers for that but if it does you know it is what it is but it is a really fun kit and if you're just straight building it you're not doing anything crazy to it it will take you a couple hours max um the plastics are really nice they feel good um mostly abs so they hold uh they they well i should say they don't hold nubs as it were um so it cleans up very nice. I mean, for the most part, I didn't do a whole lot of craziness to this, except for the paintwork. And you do have to glue things. So I used a bit of the uh, Ultra Thin Cement. Uh, the All of the hands come in two pieces. It recommends that you glue them. I would do that. There's a couple other bits along the way. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head because I don't remember. It's a couple days ago. That do have to be glued. Something in the joints near the knees and stuff like that do need to be glued. Use cement or use uh, super glue. Or if you have specific like ABS cement, cool. Use that too. But for the most part, it's really, really neat. You even have these big old plastic sunglasses, which kind of annoy me. But you can even see the super painted face and everything inside there. And speaking of painted faces, let's talk about it. It's an actual head. It actually doesn't know where to look. That's funny. So he's got the grimace face, gold eyes, red and white painted face, blue eyeshadow, and then the super gold paint there. Now, I, I was tempted to paint a little bit of silver there uh, in the middle of the head crest, but I, that was so small I didn't really want to bother. Okay, so it is on a ball joint there, so it gets you a lot of things. And I believe, yeah, there's a hinge in the chest, so he can like really like cram his head down you can go that far sideways it's actually really really articulate and then that just pops off like that so yeah it hinges inside the head it's mounted to a ball joint which is mounted to a hinge so you tell me what kind of joint that technically is oh, come on please be good please be good i think it's about as good as it's gonna get okay so uh one other thing it's a color separation on this thing is superb of because most of it's just red and black you don't have to worry about it and then like i said with the face and everything that's already painted and speaking of which i'll get to the arms in a second but i want to show this off so you actually get a hinge there so it shows off the inner mouth these are the only stickers that i did use they had little silver teethies inside there so that's the inner inner cockpit there but he can talk so he's like ah, 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 ah. you know kind of hard that be careful that will scrape off if you're just not careful with it, but you also get some teapot actuation there. You can come all the way back. You can twist, and I believe should be able to rotate at the hips. There we go. Yep. Normally I don't do torso until after arms, but this time I did it that way, and I like it. It looks good. Now the shoulder armor is mounted on a ball joint that comes off real easy and it's also on this swivel joint i'm taking that off so we can show you 
how this works. He has a shoulder pad here that completely interferes with the sunglasses. So do what you got to do. It, it can swivel forward and back, I believe. Yep. So it can swivel. The arm can swivel. It has a little bit of butterfly. It has up and down to get the thing out of the way. So you can do that. Yeah. If you want to get your rotation joint out there so that can get you there. Um, the main thing that I can tell you all right now, some of the joints from the factory are so incredibly tight, they will break if you do not prep them. So some of the joints, specifically like right here in the shoulder and the hips, very, very specifically, I will show you when we get there, um, you will have to prep them and strengthen them or at least cut out a bunch of the friction. So anyways, we can get a punch through the heavens and then through the future high teacher i do have to be careful i don't want to scrape off any of this paint let's see, rotate that all the way back around but this arm joint is pretty wonky but you can see here this inner plastic part also does pivot which is cool now something that's really interesting it only has a single jointed elbow but if you turn it this way it sort of only gets you to there but here's something that I haven't seen personally. Sideways elbow. Gets you a little bit more realistic movement. Look at that. That is so, so cool. And, you know, and it pivots here. Look at that. I want to see some Gundam kits with that. that. That's something that you don't get on a kit. You get that on figures. Yeah, I can see already some of the paint scraping off. It is a super thin layer. Also, you can get up in there some silver. And the hands are just ball joints. You just shove them in there like normal. It is what it is. Now, coming down to the hips, we got the hip skirts here, which, as you can tell, I painted the crap out of those. A little bit of scrapage happening there. They are just mounted to these ball joints. They do pop off fairly easy, so it is what it is. Also, if you come under there, you do have the stand mount, which, you know, well, you saw probably that he was on a stand in the thumbnail. All right, so let's talk about these hips because they are the most problematic design of this entire thing. So I'm going to pull this off. That is all you get for the hip, that peg. And it is hollow. And you can see there, I did my best to fill it with sprue goo to help support it. Except this one, I started to snap off prior to this review because I was trying to get the hip to move. So I have sanded this effectively not just kept it round but sanded it a lot to reduce friction inside the joint there i just sanded it a little bit inside here the hinge, the hinge joint between here and here sanded the crap out of that so that it would come up and down easier like you can see ugh, i'm actually kind of struggling just for that part and that's still super tight but what nearly got me to breaking that off was just trying to rotate the hip. So that, you can see how easy this is, so to speak, that is already looser. And that's what I was doing prior to filming, was prepping that. So I had to take it apart, which was really hard to get this back out. So just the socket down here, I scraped it out. I ran, you know, a little cylindrical sandpaper through it. And then I sanded the peg down as much as I could. And there's still a decent amount of friction there. So these hips are going to snap off on you if you are not super careful and do not prep it. I'm already super scared. Somebody already recommended drilling all the way through and then adding like a metal rod. Um, that is beyond me uh, because I don't have that kind of stuff laying around. But just know you're not going to do uh, some fancy splits on this guy without first like remove the hip, flip that up. And then put it back on. That's my recommendation to you. Unless you can get that as loose as can be. To the point that you, it'll still hold. But you know won't mess itself up. You're not going to get it to do this. Now I can get it to rotate. But right now like I'm too scared to even push that down. To get the hip to come down. Because look I'm still. Even with that sanded twice. This downward version of the universal hip still is so tight i'm scared 
but he can kick forward about to there but you can see here it's already tweaking look see that see that already tweaking so this guy will live his life on a stand i will not allow it to just you know stand i think it it'll stand fine but i'm so concerned about those hips that i will keep him on a stand speaking of the knees i didn't say anything about the knees but you do get a very significant single jointed knee which gets you to there which is fine enough for me i don't care um and then like i said you got the details all down here now you it looks as though you have a secondary knee but you actually don't come down to the ankles once again some nice paint there looks good it's just a ball joint coming down at an angle like this, so it gets you all the angle you kind of want out of that. And it is very weird looking because that looks as though it's a functional ankle, like the whole thing would move up and down. But to the best of my ability and knowledge, uh, it don't. It don't do that. It would be great if it would. But, like, I've tried to, like, push it to get it to move. It does not do. It does not do. So it's all in the ankles but man those hips scare me because like you're used to just going yoink, 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 you know and you can't you just can't do it because it will snap off i always forgot the uh shoulder armor was laying over here these also really get in the way so whenever you're trying to articulate it the big old shoulder armors totally get in the way of things okay so let's give him a little bit of forward lean now, before I start throwing all kinds of cool stuff on him, let's do some comparisons. So, um, size comparison to another robot of a different type of design. There it is with a super uh, Minipla of the Astro Megazord. So, you can see roughly about the same size. Mind you, the Astro Megazord is actually way bigger than Gurren Lagann. At least this version of Gurren Lagann. I got a little bit of crud down here. And then, just completely different, there it is next to the uh, War Greymon. And next to Figure I Standard Naruto. So he's roughly person sized. Figured, you know, instead of just bringing out Gunpla. But. Because it's the only thing I have on hand at the moment. Uh, weird customized thing here. So he is standard than a taller HG. Or a taller. He's taller than a standard HG. Uh, so, yeah. There's your size comparison. But you can see why I wouldn't have put this for like a Master Grade Monday. Because like he's definitely not a 1 to 100. 1 to 100 Gurren Lagann would be a significantly larger thing. That would be really freaking cool if they could do that though. But let's talk accessories, because holy crap, he's got a lot. All right, so let's do the single largest accessory, and that is their flight pack. You know, they, they snag this. You know, generally all of their weapons and stuff like that, and even their body and everything, they just gained from stealing from other gunmen or other units and then adapting to themselves. So this is on that list as well. So there's a flight pack for something else. He snagged it and was like, that's mine. And it does have the cool W logo here for no reason. And once again, that nice Gundam marker paint. Now, ultimately, this uh, little spike here is not supposed to be painted, but I didn't feel like scraping it clean. And there you go there. And it does actually have articulation, so you can pull this out and you can fold the wings, which is neat. And you do have slots back here for some super pointy and tiny drills. So, and look, hashtag nub shaming on Shoki. Yeah, um, I fired the paint up without realizing I had not cleaned all the nubs off these guys. And I painted these on runner just with the uh, side, side nubs taken off. So we got two larger drills. Once again, this is silver leaf. And then two smaller drills. And these you need to be careful with because, as stated, they are super pointy. And you can see it does have an angle there. Speaking of angles, 
need a little bit more. Okay, so, uh, do I have the right one? Nope, okay, so this one goes over here. Slides right in the hole like so. Now, this is a case of, I don't think they always had the drills out, but it would be cool if they did. Um, so this, this is just rule of cool applies. So if you want it to always have the drills on it, by all means, go for it. These little guys have a little bit more friction in them. Okay, so there's that. Looks cool. Look at that. And he does have the big thruster down here. Probably should have added a little bit of paint to that guy, but it is what it is. And it does mount to the backpack, which is cool. But instead of using pegs, they just use old school clippies. Look at that. So this is where, like, sometimes the figure aspect of this guy really comes forward. Sorry, I just had stuff stuck in my arm. Okay, so come to the back you just got little receptacles there and you can just like that there we go here he is with his flight pack looking spiffy as all get out where's my stand ahead for this guy oh right here so like i said you can put him on a stand and i like that it's backing out of the way so you can really kind of make use of that really point the toes and then once again, if you want to push that in and then try to. So you notice I'm pushing into the hip and then lifting the leg out as best I can. Once again, I don't want to do it if I can't get that off of there. Oops, I knocked the toes off somehow. That's crazy. How did that happen? The whole foot just came apart on me. Pause. Okay, so there I got him in pose after getting all that back together. Okay, moving on with more accessories. All right, so we got to talk hands. These are pretty interesting. So uh, one thing you do get is these extra wrist drills. Now these whole things do replace the uh, hand sockets. But as you can see here, I had him with just the basic fist in the pointing to the sky finger, which is cool. Uh, they're kind of stuck in there, uh, so that's why I didn't remove them entirely. So there's that. You can you can remove the drills if you want. These are actually bigger than the standard ones, so they actually, if you think of it, grow in size and then the drills pop out, which is kind of what happens. So that's pretty cool. I'll show that on the thing here in a minute. And then we get another pointer finger. So if you want to point with the right hand, the left one. And all of them have this little receptacle kind of in the palm. And I painted all that with silver. Every single one of them. You do get a left and right expressive outreaching hand. You can see the paint there. So that's pretty good. And you can see that these all have like a metallic flake plastic. By the way, that flake will come off on your hands as you're cutting. So if you cut these things off the, uh, the uh, runners with nippers and then like trim it up with a knife or sandpaper, however you want to do it, you're going to get super fine glitter everywhere on your fingers. Don't even worry about it. And then you get a holding hand. You also have a right holding hand as well. Now, that is actually for the next accessory, and I'll just show that off. And it is the little sunglass boomerang times two. So if you really wanted to have that attack where he throws two of these things and they're actually I guess it would be four but no it was two because it was just holding from each side uh and then you uh, drill through the opponent you can do that um they're cool but because of the coloring like I feel like it should be dark and not amber I don't know where they got the amber color from but these are made to just oops, hey, come back here go into these hands whichever way you want dang I keep dropping stuff like I said, I'm tired. Like, you can hold him this way. You know, like he's about to throw it that way. Or if you're really properly throwing a boomerang. You know, forward like that. And you can see that that really, those nubs didn't want to clean up on my end. I tried. But that's pretty cool. Okay, and if you want to replace the little wrist thingies, they just slide out like that and then I take my right one and you want to do it where the slanted side here 
is facing down. And you can see the little cutout there. And it just slides up in that peg. Like so. Like so. There it goes. It like sewed finally. And now you get the drill hands, which is pretty cool. Speaking of drill hands, we do get two massive drills for, you know, drilling people. Now these are painted, but they do come in a silver molded plastic. This is just silver leaf and then gloss coat over it. Came out pretty nice, though. You can see the mold is a little off. Like ever so slightly off. Also, if you want to, you can seam line these or you just get a good uh, glare there and then worry about it. These do recommend that you glue them together and that you glue this piece that goes into them. I did do that. Um, I don't know how good the glue would stay, but it is. I kind of like the shorty one a little bit more. It reminds me of the actual core drill. Um, I do digs it and you do have the wrist peg here because of course they replace the hands. So whether you go right or left is entirely up to you. Or you can go both. You can have a giant drill on either hand if you want to. That's on you. It's all up to you how you want to play with your plyo butt, as it were. It does have a little bit of wrist action to it, so you can kind of finagle it. That's pretty interesting that you just get a big-ass big ass drill there. Now I'm trying to remember what the longer one did like obviously there's the uh, big one that certain figures come with unfortunately these do not you know the actual uh the giga drill breaker or break the giga drill okay so yoink that out find your original wrist peg makes like you can I think you can use it with the drills, but I'm fairly certain that's going to interfere. So, almost no point in trying. So, yeah, I realize I just kind of contradicted myself. I don't care. I don't care. Let me get this guy. Plug it right up in there. And he's got two drill hands. I got two. I got two drill hands. What are you going to do about it? I need something to drill. Just Simone looking around like, hey, I got to drill something. Got a mighty need to drill some stuff. So, well, there we go. And that's the end of all of the accessories. All right. So, final thoughts-wise, guys, I know it's been a long review, but hey, there's a lot to go over. Um, as it goes, it's a really cool, quote-unquote, model. Uh, putting it together is pretty easy. Especially if you're using the stickers, it would definitely save you a buttload of time, unlike myself, which, you know, I, I wasted almost a whole afternoon doing the paint. So that's on you. The biggest, biggest flaw is, of course, the hips that are tragically designed. They're hollow. They should never have been that way. And then all of the associated joints are so weak. Or I'm sorry, not weak. They're too rigid, too stiff, which will absolutely result in you snapping off those hips. Now, if you want to take the preemptive approach, go ahead and cut them off and replace with a metal rod. Go ahead and do it. Or do what you can to reinforce it with super glue or... Um, like I did with a little bit of sprue goo, which you know, take it or leave it. Uh, but otherwise, it's a fantastic thing. Um, it's a little over the top. I do like it. However, I will always regret not being able to get the actual figure because I've seen the images and stuff of it. It is a fantastic thing. This is definitely second only to that. And it's a little stylized for the anime, like these big ridges on the skirts and the uh, arms and stuff like that. But otherwise, it's really cool. And I'm super glad they gave you pre-painted parts because I would have hated, hated to try to paint those things on. I feel like if they gave us like the huge, humongous drill, like as a separate thing, that'd be pretty cool. I do know there was like a premium version of the uh, figures that would come with that. Um, 
one other thing that is definitely annoying you have to keep moving the shoulder shields out of the way if you're moving things around because it does just flat out get in the way because it's almost always vertical like even though you're moving the arm the shield tends to stay the same orientation which is kind of cool but kind of annoying it's almost like a spinner in that aspect but as it goes i've been begging for something for grim logon for a very long time and i finally have it and it's really freaking cool i will be trying to get the lasangan or lasangan lagazan however that is the lasagna one <laughs> which is of course the uh, spiral kings version so i'll be getting that later on down the line that should be coming out sometime soon i think it's Laz lasangan I think that's what it is. But anyway, guys, let me know what you think down below uh, about this kit. <laughs> and uh, if you're inspired, by all means, post yours in the Discord. Go down to the Discord. It's in the link down below. We have a section for Gunpla. We have a section for non-Gunpla. If you've built it and you've done some cool fancy stuff, by all means, come show it off. My buddy Eric bought the other one that... Uh, Space Cadets has, and I know he's going to paint it up all super nice, but I gave him all the warnings he needed ahead of time, so hopefully when he gets to it, he'll make it perfect. Um, I know he's probably going to do like a metallic candy red paint on it, stuff like that, so maybe we'll show that off down the line once he gets it done. But guys, like, subscribe, do all the things, go check out the merch, go also uh, check out the Patreon if you want to help out over there. They got to see some of the progress as this thing was going on. And, of course, uh, they get other benefits and things like that. And every little bit you guys can do to help. I've got three channels, and only one of them is making money, and it ain't that much. So if you guys could help out, by all means, I don't want to beg, but please. So I'll catch you guys next time. Remember, as always, to keep on building or keep on drilling towards the future. <laughs>